Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another comic book haul. This time it is comic book haul number 35, the New York Comic Con. Um, before I show the books, I mean, this video has a mix of books that I got at the New York Con and some books I did not get at the New York Con, okay? So it's just mixed in uh, with a bunch. It's a bunch of different things. Um, as I, as I show some books, I'll talk to you about the New York Con and uh, how it was and my experiences and all of that. Uh, we'll start off with some books, some House of Secret books that I did not get at the New York Comic Con. So I'll just show you these right now. Here we have, what is this, number 99, House of Secrets 99. Such a beautiful cover. So beautiful, I got two copies of it. So anyway, when it comes to the New York Comic Con, I went for two days. I went Thursday, and I went Saturday. Thursday, I went with my friend Brian Quinn, who's also an illustrator. Um, he's going to be launching his YouTube. I mean, he already launched his YouTube site. I'll put that in the description here. This is House of Seekers. Was this 103, 105? Oh, how could you not love this cover? It is absolutely gorgeous. But anyway... I went, on th I went on Thursday with him and ran into Tony Toth. I first met Tony Toth a year ago <laughs> at the New York Comic Con. So it was great talking with him and uh, House of Secrets number 108. I'm sorry I keep looking at them. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head as I do other books, other uh, series. So oh, classic, beautiful mummy cover. I love mummy covers. So I ran into Tony Toth. And I ran into Good as Gold. Uh, so it was nice to meet him and I always like meeting other people unfortunately I couldn't meet up with some other people because uh, me and my friend Brian we left like around 2.30 or whatever it was and some people were just getting there around 3 or after so you know we got we got a bit of a trek to get home so anyway um, that was Thursday and on Saturday I went with my wife and at my wife's insistence we brought Little Reaper. So this was his first big con. Uh, the cool thing about this book is, now these, these House of Secret books, they're nothing really spectacular other than the beautiful artwork inside and the beautiful covers. They're not like hundreds of dollars uh, worth of books. Um, I just like them because of their great covers. But this one right here has the Mark Jeweler insert in it, so that's pretty cool. It's probably like a fine, like a 5.5, 6.0 copy around that range, but has the Mark Jewelers insert. So anyway, on Saturday, uh, we brought, which was yesterday as I'm filming this on Sunday, uh, we brought Little Reaper. How did that go? Eh, not so good. <laughs> uh, he was bored. He said he was bored. Um... He was yelling at some of the... This is uh, Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Now, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, because I've been wrong in the past when it comes to this character, so I apologize for that. This, I believe, is the first appearance of the Phantasm. <laughs> so, uh, let me know in the comments. But I, I managed to get this pretty cheap. No, then this was not at the uh, New York Comic Con. And neither was this one right here. Uh, Batman Beyond Universe... Uh, number 13. This, I believe, is the first appearance of the Phantasm in DC continuity. Great cover. Great cover. So anyway, Little Reaper, um, he was bored. And what, what do you expect, right, from a four-year-old? He was bored, but he was, he yelled at a couple of people, some people in cosplay. Uh, he was yelling at them, like, why do you look that way? Get out of my way, and all that stuff. He's, you know, he could be a little obnoxious, like his old man. But he really didn't have much of a good time. My wife did not have a good time. This is Echo. I showed this in another video. This is making its first haul debut. Echo, a future past first appearance of Bucky O'Hare. My wife did not have a good time. She enjoyed Heroes Con very much. You know, when we went over a year and a half ago. Heroes Con, it wasn't that crowded. Um, but the New York Comic Con, that's the reason why she hated it. She said it was just too crowded. It was too many people on top of each other, uh, more than what she wants, <laughs> um, and just didn't enjoy the experience at all. Here we have the Vault of Horror number thirty-seven. This is the first appearance of Drusella. She is. Uh, she was in the last few issues of, of Vault of Horror. She was. The vault keeper's like assistant. She never said anything. She just sort of stood there like, you know, like she was frozen in time. But she makes her debut 
in this book. I love this cover. In my personal opinion, this is the best hanging cover when it comes to EC books. I know the most popular is Crime Suspense 20, where you get the close-up of the guy hanging. And there are, of course, there are a few other hanging covers. But in my opinion, the angles, the way this is drawn, all of that makes this the best hanging cover, in my opinion. Another Walt O'Hara book, what a really great cover right here. It's the next issue. Walt O'Hara number 38. Uh, beautiful cover, absolutely beautiful cover of these two guys walking through the catacombs. The story is the catac the cover story is the catacombs. Another wonderful Johnny Craig. Well, when is Johnny Craig not good? But another wonderful Johnny Craig cover. I have to thank for this book, Alex the Comic Book Hoarder. He knows that I like EC as many of many people do. And he ran into a, a place that had a lot of EC. So he was messaging me, asking me, hey, you know, do you need any ECs? He's sending me pictures of all the EC books that the gentleman uh, had or has, still has, I don't know. And he says, oh, you need this, you need that. And I saw this one. I'm like, yeah, I need that one. And uh, Alex was the one that uh, helped me get this book. So shout out to Alex, the comic book hoarder. Thank you, Alex, for helping me get this great book. It's a beaut. And I think you would agree that it's an absolute beaut to have. With me. Uh, this I picked up, uh, not at the con, I picked this up at an earlier time. I forget what the significance of this book is, but I thought it had a pretty cool cover, and I got it for a couple of bucks, so I don't know. Uh, Edge of Spider-Verse, I believe, what is this, number five? Pretty cool cover. So, um, she didn't really enjoy herself. The best part of the con for her was we met up with, on Saturday, we met up with Mike, Patrick's friend. You know him from the unboxings, the CGC uh, uh, videos that they do. Uh, we met up with Mike and his girlfriend, Carol. She said that was the best part of the con for her. And because she, she, has, she, hadn't, she didn't get a chance to see them since the Heroes Con. So, it was nice... She commented it was nice seeing them, and I enjoyed seeing them too. And honestly, that was the best part of the con for me too, meeting up with Mike on Saturday, because I really, you know, really didn't enjoy the con this year. You know, every year, I got this at the con. Call the Conqueror number three. This is, you know, like what, a 6-5, copy. Uh, it's really nothing spectacular. It's the first appearance of Thulsa Doom in comics. All right? So it really wasn't... Um, Anything spectacular for me this year. I usually enjoy the New York Comic Con. It wasn't the crowds because I expect that. It's just that, you know, they didn't really have a lot of what I wanted. You know, if this is a hall that you're watching expecting to see killer book after killer book that you that I picked up at the New York Comic Con, uh, this isn't the video for you. Because I found the this I picked up at the New York Comic Con. Uh, Fantastic Four 211, is it? Or yeah, it's the uh, first appearance of Terax. As some people are specking on this book. I picked up a really, really nice copy. I think it's like an 8.0. Uh, beautiful copy. Very hard to find, you know, in high grade. I mean, not impossible, but because of the black cover, black uh, spine, all that stuff. But no, I just I found it to be completely bummed out. And I was talking to a couple of other people that I met up with, met up with at the con. They were bummed out too. It just didn't have a lot of books that I really wanted. You know... This is a second copy. I have a copy of this. I purchased a second copy at the New York Comic Con for practically nothing. I couldn't pass it up. And yeah, it's nice shape. High grade, very high grade copy. Century number one, first appearance of the century. I put this on one of my uh, comic books, hot books videos and what, what, whatnot. But they didn't really have a whole lot of what I wanted. And I found that to be, you know, it was really bothersome for me. I usually enjoy the Comic Cons. I enjoy going there and stuff. And I always enjoy meeting up with people. That wasn't the disappointing part of it. It was just that, you know, some of the books I was really looking for, they just didn't have or didn't have in the grade that I was looking for. So I can't say I went there and was wowed by what they had, you know, because I wasn't. I really wasn't. Oh, another highlight for me, though, I believe this was on Saturday. I was on Saturday. <laughs> I bumped into Rob Liefeld. Yeah, he was uh, going through uh, the comics, you know, where we were all looking for comics, moving fast, like he was trying to get to, I guess, whatever, 
maybe Midtown Comics, you know, how sometimes they hold uh, interviews and have signings and all that. Maybe he was going there, I don't know. But he was really trying to get through the crowd, trying not to be noticed. And he passed me by and I said, hey, it's Rob Liefeld. And he's like, hey, how's it going? Nice to see you, you know, all that stuff, just trying to move on. So that was pretty cool. You know, he could have just completely ignored me, but he didn't. But uh, was, that was pretty cool. But, um, yeah, there was really nothing else to say about it, you know. This I did not pick up the New York Con. This is Haunt of Fear number 15. This is the uh, first first issue of Haunt of, of Haunt of Fear. Um, it's probably a 3... Excuse me. It's probably a 3.0. Nothing spectacular, but uh, definitely a book that I was glad that I was able to get. I picked this up over the summer. And uh, complete, attached, no rust, uh, happy to have it. It's not... It's. I think it's this and Vault of Horror 12 are sometimes not easy to find. I mean, Crypto Terror 17 is not necessarily easy to find either, but this is the th this is the third of the first issues in the uh, new trend uh, horror books. Crypto Terror 17 is the first. Some may argue Tales from the Crypt 20 is the first. I still think it's Crypto Terror 17. Vault of Horror 12 is the first, and Haunt of Fear 15. I believe this title was called Gunslinger before it was called Haunt of Fear. So it, the issue before it was Gunslinger number 14. So very happy to get this. Uh, some say that this is the first appearance of the Old Witch, you know, just on the cover, sort of like a Hellboy sort of thing, where Dime Press 4, it says Hellboy on it. You know, I, I think, what's his name? Mignola wrote Hellboy. On the on that cover somewhere, I don't remember. I used to have it. I got rid of it a few years ago. But he doesn't appear in the actual book. It's the same thing with this, perhaps. That some consider this to be the old witch, but she doesn't appear in the book. I don't know. I think I don't know if this is the old witch. It kind of comes off a little as the vault keeper to me. But some argue it's the old witch. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But this is the first issue of Haunt of Fear. Uh, with number 15. So, um, yeah, I'm still hoping to get a couple other books that I was not able to find at the New York uh, Con. But I would say out of the years that I've been going, I'm going to show you one last book that I got from the Con. Uh, very happy to get this. This was one book I was looking for at the Con, okay? Uh, so, and I got it on Thursday. And uh, it was really cool to finally get it. I got a nice copy of it. It could use a press. But I got this right here. Yeah. Special Marvel Edition number 15. First appearance of Shang-Chi. Very happy to have this. I got it for a good price. Like I said, it's probably... Um, after a press, it could probably go to an 8.5 or a 9. Uh, as is, it's probably an 8. So... Hey, I think I made out well. But uh, there were quite a few of these at the, at the con, as one would expect. You know, because all the hype behind it. Um, yeah, but this was the best pickup for me, and I was glad I got it for the price I got it. But overall, this year's New York Con eh, really didn't have that much of a good time. Next year, who knows? We'll see. But it was largely, again, because of, you know, there were a couple other books I wanted that I just, they just didn't have. They just didn't have. Uh, so that's always a bummer. You know, when you go to a, an event like the New York Comic Con, you know, it's supposed to be a big event. It's not just some Comic Con held at some, pro, you know, little hall across town or a couple towns away where you may not expect to run into some bigger books or hard to find books. You're at the New York Comic Con. You're expecting maybe to find some of those harder to find books or bigger books. <laughs> just didn't have it. And like I said, I was there on Thursday. But someone told me, I forget, I think it, it might have been might have been Tony, that, you know, before, and, I, and, and Mike has told me this too, that, you know, before the cons open, you get the dealers going to other dealers, buying up some books, and then adding it to their inventory, you know, they're working out deals between each other, and uh, all that, so, maybe that was part of it, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, it kind of soured the experience for me, and the fact that my wife didn't enjoy herself. Little James didn't enjoy himself with what he expects. He's four years old, but um, he usually interacts well with people, but mm, not this time. <laughs> but anyway, that's my haul. Uh, you know, 
bunch of comics from the New York Comic Con and other books that I picked up over the last few, uh, few months. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, i got a couple other videos lined up for you, more discussion videos. I'm going to see if I could put together you know, some horror comics or at least horror covers uh, for Halloween this year. So hopefully you'll stay tuned and look out for that video. Hopefully I'll get to filming it soon. And uh, hey, anybody else went to the New York Comic Con watching? Did you enjoy yourself? Uh, did it meet your expectations? Yeah, leave, leave a note in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Take care, everyone. Thank you.